Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is running for the presidency of the United States, as many of you know, in a long shot run to replace incumbent President Joe Biden, who says that he will be running for re-election once again. However, an uprise in the amount of polarization in politics from right across the United States has a lot of people talking, including Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who is asking now the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, for Secret Service protection. Joining me now to discuss the latest on this is Charles Marino, former Secret Service agent himself. Thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. Sure, Wyatt. Thanks for having me. Uh, so perhaps let's just start out. Is this request by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. a reasonable request? I mean, as I said, we are seeing a lot of uh, polarization taking place in the political scene. But then again, not very many of the candidates that are running have Secret Service protection. A lot of them are hiring their own private security. That's exactly right. And there's certainly going to be more no's than yeses when it comes to people requesting Secret Service protection because there's a process that needs to be fulfilled and a criteria that needs to be met. So let's start with the role of the Secret Service. The Secret Service plays uh, a small part, uh, an important part, but a small part of this overall process. The Secret Service doesn't decide, for example, why it, who gets Secret Service protection. And they're certainly not empowered to just on their own uh, start protection operations for any of these candidates. As you alluded to, uh, the ultimate authority falls to the Secretary of DHS working with the con Congressional Advisory Committee that consists of the Speaker of the House and the minority and majority leaders of both the House and the Senate. Um, the Secret Service provides the threat assessment, the overall threat assessment for RFK Jr. and any other candidates that would request Secret Service protection, uh, at, at which time they will come back and basically identify uh, risks and, and potential threats to the candidate. So based on the outcome and the decision by the secretary, uh, I think it's fair to state that a lot of the criteria has not been met yet. And obviously, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has a very different perspective, but his perspectives on a lot of things, I mean, not saying by any means that he isn't free to make the claims and the statements that he is making, but they are widely known to be conspiracy theories, things that mm -hmm. are in many ways described as misinformation. Um, if, you know, say he were to be more factual in his you know, dealings with, you know, say when he's giving a media interview, when he's speaking at an event for his presidential campaign or what have you, how much of the threats that he claims he is facing is due to the misinformation or conspiracy theories that he is spreading? Well, certainly political rhetoric, uh, I describe it as that, plays a role uh, with respect to the overall threat picture in terms of who lang specific language uh, may or may not appeal to. So that's part of the overall threat assessment. Certainly, I would advise all political candidates uh, to be aware of what they're talking about and that you know any type of position that one of these candidates may take uh, is always going to appeal to somebody, no matter how extreme it may be. But, you know, in terms of the criteria, Wyatt, a lot of this falls to the candidate themselves. And that is, how are they polling? Have they been polling at anywhere between 15 and 20 percent for 30 days straight? Uh, what's their name recognition? Um, how many primaries uh, have they been eligible to enter? Uh, are they eligible to participate in the debate? All of this plays into the overall decision, believe it or not, on whether somebody receives Secret Service protection or not. And then finally, I'll finish with this. Let's not forget or ignore that there's a financial interest in these candidates from peeling off of their private security and moving to taxpayer funded Secret Service protection. Private security is extremely expensive and can range from anywhere from $250,000 a day to $1 million a day. Certainly a fair point there. Perhaps let's to 
um, pick up on the the name recognition aspect of things. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He is claiming that um, that the Secret Service almost is doing this purposely because they they want something disastrous to happen to him, which of course is not the case. It has no evidence whatsoever. The factors that you mentioned are an example of that. He does not meet numerous of those requirements. Of course, he is not even going to be on the debate stage because there is no debate. Um, and, and certainly, as you said, as well, some of the political rhetoric a lot of people are attributing to the reasoning as to why he is not getting this uh, Secret Service protection. Um, but perhaps speak a little bit about that last point that you mentioned here further about the, um, I think people will, will probably find it insightful as it relates to the idea of having to pay for private security versus it getting paid for by taxpayers. That's, of course, what happens for the president, but that's because he's the most powerful person in the United States, whereas Robert F. Kennedy Jr. really isn't polling that high to be seen as a credible candidate in terms of having the potentiality of winning the presidency. No, that's exactly right. And all of this comes into play, as I said previously, you know, uh, RFK Jr., if you saw his tweet, he cited the unfortunate assassinations of both his father and his uncle, President John F. Kennedy. And, and what I can say is, while that adds to historical context regarding the family, and certainly plays a role in part regarding his notoriety, what it doesn't play is any type of a role in his overall threat assessment that the Secret Service played here. And I can tell you, there's no more of an apolitical organization than the Secret Service. And that's exactly where they belong, right down the middle. They show up each and every day, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican president and vice president and other members of, of a presidential administration. And regardless of party affiliation, they show up and they protect the people holding those offices that have been identified to receive Secret Service protection. So I would uh, advise uh, that any kind of political rhetoric coming from RFK Jr.'s campaign be avoided because it's not uh, factual at all. And uh, my sources are telling me, as a matter of fact, that he was nowhere close to being eligible to receive Secret Service protection. And the fact that his private security company produced a 67 page report trying to articulate why he should receive Secret Service protection tells me that there's nothing there because if there were in fact specific incredible threats against him, it would not take 67 pages to articulate that. It would probably take less than 10. All right, we'll leave it there. That's former Secret Service agent Charles Marino. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wyatt.